One of the best parts of virtual production is being able to change anything at any time and seeing the results. I'm going to show you how you can get that same behavior with audio while also saving a lot of time. I'm going to be using a very common and tedious example to illustrate just how valuable this process can be. Adding footsteps to a character crossing frame. I'm going to be showing the way people are currently adding audio so we have a good reference point. We mark up every footstep that we see and then we place footsteps at those locations. We go through and we add variations to the sound. To ground the sound in the scene, we need to add a few thins. We fade in and then out as he passes the camera. We add a pan so that it starts on the left side and goes to the right. And then we add a little bit of convolution reverb so it sounds like the sound is bouncing all around the room. Okay, so this works all right, but what if you or the director wanted to change the shot? Here we've changed the timing, the distance from camera, the direction, even the material being stepped on and the reverb environment. We'd have to start entirely from scratch. Now let's have a look at what I've set up inside Unreal. This is the scene, here's Sequencer. Let's just play it through. As you can hear, we've got the audio changing to distance from camera and panning, and it even has some convolution reverb in there. The coolest thing about this setup is this though. If I show these buildings, we have a bit of our alley going. So I turn on this audio volume, which I'll explain later, and then open up my other sequence with the different camera shot. You'll see the change instantly. You notice the sound has changed based on things like the distance from camera, the pan in. It's also changed based on the reverb that I've assigned to this area. But check this out. We've gone in and we've changed the material of this ground to this rubble. And now our sound is fully changed. What if, instead of rubble, we decided we wanted something that looked a bit like dirt? Or maybe we'd even want some snow. This scene better shows off the footsteps changing sound based on the material. So this setup must be pretty complicated, right? It's actually quite straightforward. We have a handful of small elements working together. So if you look on the animation of the basic version, I've actually gone through and just as we did in the editing program, marked each footstep with an anim notify. And on the anim notify, it's playing a sound. If we go into this footstep wood audio cue I've made, you can see that it's actually a little different than just one single sound. So what's happening here? It's selecting one of five clips at random and then modulating that with a random pitch min, pitch max. This means that every time we play this audio cue, we're getting a slightly different variation. It helps to take a lot of the menial work out of making footsteps sound unique. But how do we get the volume? the pan in and some of the other great features. Well, a lot of that's done through the attenuation settings. In the attenuation, you can set the volume based on distance, the spatialization, where it is in relation to the camera. You can set up occlusion based on whether you can see the object or if it's occluded by something else. And you can also set up a submix. This is where things get a little more complicated. This is what I'm using to set up the convolution reverb. It's not 100% necessary, but it does add that nice echoey feeling, making you feel like you're inside an environment. So in my custom submix, I just have one effect on the chain, and it's my custom submix effect. In this custom submix effect, I've set up an impulse response. An impulse response is audio captured from an environment and then used as the basis for the convolution reverb of other audio. It's basically like a reflection capture, but for audio. Just for reference, here are what some impulse responses sound like.
These are captured in all different environments to ground other audio elements in that kind of environment. And the result is this. But I'm missing that tricky part where it changes based on the material on the ground. I've actually set up custom notifiers instead of just the preset play sound notify. So in these, I've been able to set up my own logic. Blueprints look scary, but if we go through this step by step, I'm sure you'll see it's actually quite simple. Here, I've just signified whether the foot is a right or left foot, and we'll find out why in a second. Based on that, it sets the bone name. We have a line traced by channel. It's drawing a line from a start point to an end point. So I've set the start point as my mesh's bone, which in this case is the left or right foot, depending on if I've ticked right foot or not. It then traces down into the ground and it finds out what type of surface is on the ground. And then based on the surface that it finds on the ground, it plays one of these sounds. Now my default is kind of a debug camera shutter sound, so don't worry about that. It either plays wood if it's wood, gravel if it's gravel, dirt if it's dirt, and snow if it's snow. It plays this at that location that we found before where the foot hits the ground, and that's it. Here I've turned on the debug mode, so you can really see how each footprint lives behind that location. Now, how to set up these surface types. You've got to go into your project settings, search for surface type, and Unreal has all these already set up. So surface type one, type in what that is. You just type in these names. So let's add another one here, we'll call it water. Then you need to create these, a physical material. So you go and you create physics, physical material. Let's create one now and let's call it water. Okay, now that we've created our water, we'll go in, open this up, and all we really need to change is down here. We just say water. So we make a new sound cue, steps water. Open that one up. We import our sound, add our sound in here, put in a modulator, set it to a bit wider, 1.3 let's say. And now even though we're just using one sound, it still sounds a little bit different every time. Don't forget to set the attenuation in here inside your custom sound notifier. Refresh nose, it adds the water channel. We go back and then we want to set this variable to play our footsteps water. Now in our water material, we just need to set physical material to water. It took a lot of small steps to get here, but the beauty of this setup is we can go in to a new animation, add our notifier that we've already set up. And it works. So these kind of systems can help us save a lot of time doing menial audio tasks. But what about for the rest of the sound design? I'm gonna do a quick overview of the linear editing approach I used in my short film. Here's the master sequence. So at the top, I have these shots and inside each shot is all the action broken down what I want you to look at is here. So if I scrub through, you'll see all these green sound icons in the characters and around the environment and everything else. These are actually audio locations that I'm referencing inside the audio tracks. If we take a closer look at one of these, I've added a sound. The sound has been attached to a specific character, meaning all the sound will originate from him. And this is done through attenuation settings like we talked about before. I've also been able to keyframe the pitch and the volume to animate up and down depending on the shot. This approach allows us to just focus on adding the sounds we'd like and Unreal Engine does the rest in integrating into the scene. One thing to note, at the moment, to render out sound, you cannot use movie render queue. Instead, use the render inside sequencer and on audio output, select master audio submix. When this renders, it will go through the first time and render out the visuals. The second time it will show a black screen and render out the audio as a separate audio file. So look for it inside your output directory. I hope this video helps you improve the audio workflow in your own projects so you can spend more time on the creative decisions and less time on the menial tasks.